just come back from Liverpool. We are tired. It's literally the day after Rob Catton's amazing win with Prism Awakener of Soul. I'm going to ask off, dude, how are you <laughs> winning with Prism and getting those first Living Legend points? Yeah, I'm buzzing, to be honest. It's been pretty well received on uh, Discord. My I'm phone. sure. <laughs> I was driving back from Liverpool last night. Um, and my phone, I could just feel as I was driving my phone buzzing off and like lots of different mess messages because obviously a lot of people love Prism and excited to see her good again. Um, I'm not too bad, I've had a good sleep, so oh, yeah, it's been good. Fantastic. So, uh, just a quick, just a very quick rundown. Um, how there was it eight rounds of um CC in the Battle of Harden? Yep, so yeah, eight rounds and then three more. So, I was playing for like 12 hours yesterday. <laughs> 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 oh, goodness me. Do you, um, what was your Swiss record with Prism? Uh, seven and one. Um, so I lost to Michael Feng on Bravo. Oh, um, okay. which we'll, we'll come to that later. Yeah. Um, and yeah, um, I faced three KNOs, which was quite nice playing yeah. Prism. Yeah. Um, quite a lot of KNO out of the battle hand. Um, and then yeah, top eight was Bravo, Dash. Bolton, so it was a light, light face off in the finals. I was very, very excited to see that final. I was as I was casting the 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 finals of the call in. I was uh, very, as a big Bolton fan myself. I was I was really happy to see Bolton in the final, and then I'm rooting for you as well. So I was just like, oh yes, Rob Catton's in the final. Now. Prison man, what? The I've always known you as the you're you're the man that took Phi of all the heroes to um worlds and I've always known you as this really good aggressive player. And then I know you've also dabbled in with oh, and Chain, because I've always that's when I first met you with Chain. Um he's he's just explosive damage, Phi, explosive damage, and I know you've dabbled with many, many heroes as well, including Icelander. But he well with Prism, showing that you're a multilingual in your hero abilities so it was uh really really cool to see let's go through this so prism awaken so why did you pick prism so yeah i guess first off i'll name drop jake warburton uh was me and him would uh, better pick this up as soon as the new weapon came out um i worked with him on azalea uh, which he made top eight of baltimore with we both played that at baltimore yeah um and basically, just like the we we realize that the rate of the deck, like when it comes to aggressive stuff, like like you say, I'm really interested in playing aggressive decks, and the rate that this puts out, like when you when you come in with like a red water and herald or a red herald of triumph for seven, and it's like on hit, I'll go get an angel, and then I'll smack you with that, and then I'll smack you with another herald maybe afterwards. Like you can put out fifteen plus damage turns, plus you get an angel, which gains you four. So like it's really hard for decks to you know, face up to that sort of um, damage. Um, so we toyed around with it for a while. The problem that we were seeing like initially was that we were trying to do like the Iris switchboard sort of list with like the blue auras. Um, that that ended up having a lot of problems. Like we didn't have much sideboard space because we had to play all these like haze bendings and shimmers of silver yeah, in the sideboard. Yeah. And we had the problem against Bravo where like, you could build up two auras, like they they clear an aura every turn, obviously. And your idea is that you hit with your auras. Now the next turn, you and then end of turn you play an aura, and then they they're still back to having to clear your auras and stuff. Um, the problem is when you don't draw an aura because a lot of the deck is heralds. Yeah. You just draw like a hand of heralds, and then a hand of heralds, and all of a sudden you've got no auras anymore, and you've got absolutely no pressure, and you have to start again. So we sort of threw it away, but then. I've come across this like idea of just playing Luminaris always, I'm leaning into like some tricks with like Angelic Wrath and Celestial Reprimand, um, which I'm, we'll come to later, yeah. and that basically solved all the problems. So. Right. So it turns out Dust Till Dawn did give you all the tips and tricks you needed. You just needed that last missing piece was um, a weapon that just wasn't too expensive <laughs> to do that yeah. plan. So it was almost exactly. there the whole time. That's that's really cool to see. So let's go. Since you're talking about the weapon, it's the weapon you wanted to pick and run all the way through the new Luminaris Angel Glow. If you have picked, it's so similar to the old one. It's really scary, but thank goodness this doesn't work with auras. Otherwise, um, we'd be back in hell. If there was a yellow 
card pitched in your zone, the first attack action card with Herald in its name you play each turn, and your first angel attack this turn gets go again. Very strong we saw this. I was like, oh my word, it's so close. But like I said, no auras. So yeah, talk about this weapon. Like you were saying, making all these angels in it uh, have go again, as well as the um, heralds. Is it just? Is it just that strong? Yeah, it it means that you don't have to actually play so many blues as well. So like, there's actually a real power to. It's like all the heralds are ever started in um, prism. So like, being able to play like the all these yellows means that. Like late game when you because you're pitching all these yellows when you draw them back around it's like not quite as bad as when you pitch in blues like in normal decks yeah um so like that's really good um it enables uh, some interesting cards like library um mm. yeah um like footsteps as well sometimes gives you like extra bite of the apple because like you can go like in with a angel in with a herald in with another herald they pop it and you're like okay well now i'll attack with something else as well so like footsteps plays really nicely with it yeah um so yeah this this weapon is what makes the the deck playable because yeah like you said the previous one was just too expensive absolutely absolutely so you're talking about phantasmal footsteps that's coming back in it seems to be the only foot piece that you need to run it, is there interesting plays where you can actually just go right uh, come in with a herald. It has go again. You pop it. Phantasmal footsteps gives you that action point back. I swing with an angel. That has go again. And I can maybe depending on how many resources I have left, I still end with a herald. <laughs> it just seems so crazy, right? Yeah, exactly. There's cool little tricks you can do with it as well. Like um, really important player that comes to mind with footsteps is with merciful retribution. So we'll come to that yeah, later on because yeah. it's one of the important arms, but. When you attack with a herald into a matchup and you've got a merciful out, when it gets popped, it goes to uh, so two triggers happen: the footsteps trigger and the merciful trigger to save to put it to soul. Yeah, it goes to soul. Vestige says something's gone to soul, so your card pitches for one more. So when you pitch the footsteps, you get the extra resource from the vestige and stuff. So like timing with the footsteps is really key. Wow. So you don't want to pick the footsteps with your card. Get your action point back and then put the herald to sell because then you've lost one resource. So it almost becomes free in that situation. That's yeah. Wow, this is really cool. It's just like explaining these little and I think that's what um I'm gonna be finding as we're going through this deck. Because I'm gonna be learning with you, everyone, all right? That it's all about the maximizing the value of everything that you're doing. And it's not going to be face up telling you what it's going to do, right? And like you were saying, just using the triggers appropriately, which is, feels very, it's complex. It's very wizardry sort of thing where you go, the timing of everything matters. And if you don't, you're going to lose out on so much more potential. This deck can just throw out at your opponent which is just makes it feel like it's unfair but it's on you as the player to get right yeah and honestly like right now i'm feeling like i don't i don't really i don't want to play any prism today like i'm sick of it like it's so <laughs> complicated it's like and you f i honestly felt dumb yesterday because like there's so many decisions at all these different points and different things you can do different choices with your angels like which angel would i attack with do i want to banish this card and it's honestly really tiring. So like, I'm I'm not. I'm sure I'll get my batteries will recharge in a few days. But right now, I'm just like, ugh. It's, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad to put it away for a few days. I can imagine, especially when you've been playing for how many hours <laughs> over and over through the battle hardened. But that's really cool. So fan, fan, fantastical footsteps. Got to pick that up. You were talking about the chess pieces. We were talking about vestiges of soul. So we've got two here, and I imagine yeah. they are matchup dependent chess pieces. Let's go through the vestiges of soul. If a card has been put into your soul this turn, whenever you pitch a light card, instead gain that many plus one, right? So this is really cool. This is like an old school Monarch card that um, I remember Raya saying that she, she, when I saw a video, this has popped up. I was like, oh, okay. And then this card gets tossed around quite a bit in Prism, but you put it in. How come? What's it doing? So, yeah, like you say, it is matchup dependent. And basically, there's a bunch of auras and like cards like Tome and Merciful and Genesis. When they come in, um, 
they they then they usually come in when Harold is like not enough, and Rapture only really works when Harold like is enough, I suppose. Yeah. Um, and when Vestige is going, it's like, yeah, it's it's just it's absolutely insane to be honest when it's going because just things like your opponent attacks your merciful retribution because they have to because that guy's just killing them. Yeah. It puts itself in soul. All of a sudden, in their turn, card's gone to soul and turn. Now you can pitch a blue to play a Genesis, or you can pitch a blue to play Tome. Yeah. Or you can you play pitch a blue to play Tome, draw three cards, and then play Genesis and stuff. Like you can do lots of cool players with it on your turn. Like stuff like Genesis enabling it just means you have like absolutely monstrously large turns because this deck can draw so many cards. Yeah. Um, and best thing is they're churning away resources every single turn. Um, so yeah. Definitely a mainstay and definitely not cuttable from the deck, yeah. Yeah, we won't go through like in detail about um, what sort of matchups there this can be put into. <clears throat> You've put this in your matchups thing on the um, on on the link anyway, and the link will be below, so you can see there yeah. when you want to play this. And I think more importantly, and I stress this enough to everyone as we're going through this, this is something you have to play a bit of to get right there's no way we're going to be able to sort of <laughs> break down the so many interaction points that, to maximize the value of that term because it's so contextual isn't it on what they're doing how they're blocking yeah so just bear this in mind everyone but really cool vestures of souls there and the imperium rapture this seems like an aggressive chess piece when poppers and auras are not being it, you don't need to worry about that just going to use this to flip up angels for free, right? Yeah, exactly. It has like the extra bit of text, which almost never comes up, but it's actually it's super important into Kana. Um, mm. Just a little bit of extra arcane barrier slash spell void sort of thing when you when you need it. Um, but yeah, just when you're wanting to go absolutely ham at them with Herald and you're pretty confident that, that they're going to hit, this is definitely the the chess piece to use. Yeah, easy peasy, nice. Nice, right. So the um, we'll go for their piece. Pretty simple. We all I knew that Halo of Illumination is just always going to be picked. It, I imagine the interaction of I'll go grab a, a a figment at any point I want because I'm going to use this to put put a Herald into Soul straight away, triggering um her ability. Grab the figment that is most appropriate in this situation, right? Yeah, I mean, I think this is actually the best card in the deck. Um, there is, I don't think there's a piece of equipment in any deck that's as good as this equipment is in this deck. Like, you know, like scabs in brew or like breaking Scab. scales in katsu yeah. sort of thing. Like yeah. all of their good piece of equipment, but there's there is no piece of equipment that's as good as this one is in this deck. I think that if there was a headpiece that like blocked five, I'd play this instead. Like, <laughs> there's no, yeah. Ch ch Tutor is, yeah, the, the amount of interactions this is creating in just one, for one resource is, I imagine the Spell Void 2, does that ever, I know that'll be Kano, does that ever come up? Or is it just yeah, I mean, the instant, it's just too strong? Like you say, it just comes up against Kano. It's quite nice that it's like, if it's hits in play, it's Spell Void 2, and if I use it, I can go get um, like Figment of Judgment, if Kano plays wrong, like Kano can play around Figment of Judgment, but like if they banish a Blazing, I can uh, in a uh, correct moment I can go get Figment of Judgment and just turn it first down, which yeah. obviously will lose them the game. <laughs> um, <laughs> a really, really important interaction, which I'm sure players are gonna now that I mention it as well. Like I've been catching people out with this all weekend. Um, like the most important interaction with Halo is. If you ever attack, if Halo's in play and I have an angel, and you ever attack my angel directly with go again, when you declare the angel as a target of the attack, I can use Halo to go get Figment of Ravages and shoot myself, and use the angel as ward. And then your go again doesn't work. So Oh, what? I don't even know. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't thinking of that. I thought, and this is, again, this is, wow, there's so many interactions. I thought it was going to be, oh, okay, so you're going to come in and attack me. Well, I'm going to attack you with a Herald. You're going to pop it, and I'm going to go get, and this is probably the easiest one, right? This is why I'm such Figment a noob. Figure out a triumph. Oh, minus one. I watched you do this with um, 
uh, in the final against the Bolton player where he was coming in to pop it with the bolting blade and it was coming in for seven and Herald and the uh, Herald of Triumph was giving it minus one, so it's six and you just went whoop and triumph. Minus one, so no pop. And yeah, then they were forced to use a soul shield and then oh, it's just like this has seemed this seems so doomed. <laughs> yeah. But the Ravagers one is one that when people say they're like, ah, not going to do that again. Like it's 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 a pr- pretty big gotcha moment, especially if they've like kept five cards and then they start their turn by going, "I'll kill this angel to start with," and it's like, "Oh, he turns over." Um, oh <laughs> like that's huge. It's also huge in um, guardian matchups because, like, if you use it on your turn, you can go get a second card to soul, go get Pigment of Erudition, which is the draw card one. You've just turned on Vestige because the card's gone to soul. Yeah. You tackle the end, will draw two cards, and then you just start going right. Now it's time to play ALS and Genesis and stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah. So realistically, it's the the hardest part about Halo is the open book it delivers because of the tutor effect, because of the ability to get any figment to that has a multitude of different it this happens once moments, and it's about maximizing the use case of this at the most crucial moment at the to just turn it over into your point of the game at the right time yeah. right is that exactly and you definitely don't want to waste it like i've had moments where i'm like oh, i could my hands are a bit boring here like i could go do this and it's just like yeah but you sort of if, if the longer it sits in play basically like the more value you're gonna get from it i guess like it's it's one that you don't want to just use like on some tiny little advantage when you could just do something else. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. it's it, the power of it is just through the roof. So um, just be careful with how you use it, I guess. Yeah, there you go, there you go. And then your arm pieces, you've got the null rune gloves. No, null rune, right? Yeah, when, when not much to say. Yeah, and the glove gauntlets, <clears throat> which is. Um, it, it, an, an interesting piece because I know that this card gets brought up, but there's also the Dream Weavers as well that um, has been in the past being used. But you've opted for the Glyon of Gauntlets. How come? Yeah, we were using Wave of Reality as well, um, which was fine. Like I think anybody would just say that card is just fine. Like it just gains you two life. Um, but yeah, Glyon Gauntlet. Especially when you play nine Herald of Triumph, so like in certain matchups, you know that they're only really going to play six poppers. That's something I wanted to mention actually, yeah. because the presence of this deck and nine Herald of Triumph and the Celestial Reprimands, I think that decks are going to maybe a lot of decks played Yellow Fighting Spirit because it's a six and it's a yellow pitch, so like that's quite nice. But when Herald of Triumph is in the format, Yellow Fighting Spirit becomes so much worse. And like in combination with Goliath Gauntlet, so that if I come in with a Herald of Triumph for nine. Like, that's going to ask you for three cards, at least. Yeah. Um, And then I've got to go again. Probably not going to be able to pop it. I'm going to hit you with whatever comes afterwards. So, And yeah, like, there's some really cool players you can do with Goliath Gauntlet. Like, if you've got Herald of Erudition, which obviously everyone knows when that hits, it's a pretty pretty good one. <laughs> yeah. Got a slash little reprimand to protect it, because you, you can then, you know, put the eggs in the basket, because you've got the protection from the popper. Then that's a pretty good combo, also. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody poppers on their longer six, poppers a seven. You need it, yeah. and even then, with one move, <laughs> poppers. You need it, it. This is what I'm starting to find now that you're just maximizing the use of poppers. Aren't poppers now like the the safety net of you putting these cards in? And that's what I started to do when I was making the Viscera deck. Going, like I looked at the uh, Amplify the Art Knight being six, and I was like, it is a popper. But man, does it, do I feel like this is this isn't good enough now? Do you know what I mean? I need to start looking at all my sevens, and I'm just safely looking at ninth flag, going, "You'll be fine." But yeah, it's <laughs> it's that that's what it's seeming to be. So, everyone, if you're thinking just putting sixes in is going to be enough, it isn't. Let's talk about this deck. Let's start this off. Let's just go through these heralds, right? I think that's a pretty easy sort of starting point yeah. to go on. So you were talking about your nine herald of triumphs. Very good. Attack action cards have minus one while defending this, which is, again, putting it to that point of six strengths aren't enough because they're not going to pop. You need a seven. Is that it? Pretty much, yeah. I'm, I'm quite happy to send blues against a lot of decks as well because, like, a blue held triumph with go again is often going to ask for two cards just the same as a yellow one would as well. So, like, 
like I said, they're overstated and Herald of Triumph is without a doubt the best one. Um also play nine Watchmen Herald. Uh, just of one cross. <laughs> yeah. One cross is just too too good for this. Um Yeah. Yeah. Nothing yeah. Like, no, yeah. simple as that. Just damage and awkwardness and good numbers. Herald of Tenacity, making a nice little comeback here. How come? So yeah, basically there's some decks that like Kasai is the main one. Kasai really wants to just block with two cards and then like pitch. So they'll block, block with two cards on your Herald for six and then probably take the next Herald. Mm -hmm. And then they're quite happy to just use two cards to go pitch to Sabre, Blade Runner, and with the next Sabre. Yeah. They also have the Valiant Dynamo, so they can even cover up a seven on the first attack with um, two cards. Held of Tenacity it just goes, oh, okay, so now I'm going to need to use some armor. Like against, obviously you have to grind through the armor a little bit and stuff, but just that just dominate is just so good and like with angelic rafts as well into these low popper matchups um just forcing the on hit is just so important in this deck yeah. it does look a little bit bland um held of tenacity like it looks a little bit understated it's only a two for six in red two for five in yellow but they're just solid role players um and yeah i'm tempted by the third red herald of tenacity to be honest yeah one of the one of the game in the final I was there watching it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, was, that's another that's another deck. So Bolton Warriors again, just quite happy to just put cards in front of um in front of Heralds, but yeah, Dominate removes that option. Yeah, absolutely. So um I'm not yeah, and obviously we'll go through the we got Herald of Protection as well. I mean this one is this is this one of the it's not this scariest. That that that, that accolade goes to uh, Herald of Erudition, but Herald of Protection it's an incredibly scary one because uh, that hits. That that on hit is wild, creating a special shield token. Yeah, special shields have a really good role to play in this deck because, um, especially into like like Kadaches and stuff like that. Like you want to protect your angels on the next turn um, from getting attacked because you don't want to be attacked for one of the Kadachi and an angel have to you know take the damage for that. Yeah. Um, so special shields protecting protecting you from that is really important um and yeah um we were playing reds in this for a little while but they were they made way for the red tenacity is um, yeah so i could see going back to red herald of protection um if you don't think the dominate is important yeah fair enough easy and then of course the herald of erudition this card is just an alt if you're going to play prism you got to put this in your deck if this hits you draw two cards and you have go again because of your silly really strong weapon is this card all about the setup right you can't it's not about throwing this out as soon as you see it because you know that everyone is keeping you know their the fridge and everything in the fridge and their back garden to make sure this doesn't land so it's about getting this at the right opportune moment is that fair to say yeah pretty much um it's like and it like you say about saving it for the right moment that's this is the main Goliath Gauntlet like, target, so like saving that you're not going to send this in for seven when they've got, you know, two block two equipment up, so they just go block two, block twos, and a block three. Like that's that's a waste. Yeah. Um, it's all about the setup, like you say, and it's just a really solid role player because it's still block th block three yellow herald. So like, you know, we need we need a, a decent amount of these anyway. It's actually really important into decks like Dramai. Right. because Dramai is a bit. Matchup and like sending this uh, a dragon, which you guarantee the on hit goes to sold. You draw two cards. Players like that are actually pretty fine, and you don't usually want to send heralds into dragons otherwise. Um, it's a little bit different to how it used to be, though. Erudition, because Erudition used to be if it hits, you just keep going with Luminaris because like, the old Luminaris obviously just never stopped, it just gave go again to everything. Yeah, with this one, you are still limited to um, usually three, three attacks a turn. No, the one herald would go again, one angel would go again, and then another one of E either. Yeah. So with their addition, I do find myself blocking a little bit just to make use of all my cards because you often can't use all of them. Yeah. Um, it's quite nice to enable an ALS though because sometimes they go, well, you don't have go again. You've, only, you've got an arsenal already. Yeah, you can draw two cards. And if you draw two blues, you can just go, okay, ALS, thank you for the <laughs> six resources. <laughs> <laughs> it's... It just it's one of those things and that's what makes this card so strong. It's that ultimate feeling of damned if you do, damned if you don't sort of situations. It's just the 
and especially like as we were talking about the vestige as well giving you that extra resources if this hits go get this and blah 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 and, and you say, oh my goodness me you could just go grab another and you could pay for that angel even if you haven't got the rapture to flip it those two card draws are not going to go to waste exactly there's all, there's all, almost always something you can do with the resources in this deck so yeah yeah <laughs> awesome and then the last one oh yeah there is one there's one more they're blue Howard Ravages. Why have you gone for just the blues? Yeah, these the on hit for this isn't so interesting to me. Like an extra damage is is good. Um, I think that's why I like it most in bl in blue because it's basically like a two for six almost. Yeah. Um, so this is just making up the numbers for light cards because Vestige of Soul only gives you an extra resource if you put pitch a light card. So that's why you don't see like the full complement of Pierce Reality in there because that's not a light like card yeah. um and also like you just need a certain amount of a, a critical mass i suppose of heralds in this deck because you are you will at some point playing this deck draw a hand of like soul shield light of soul uh pierce reality a figment and you're like oh this hand does nothing um so <laughs> having making sure you always have a herald available to do something at least is super important so yeah i really like the heralds yeah Awesome, awesome. So that is all the heralds there. So these are the ones that you should be picking up. I believe what we'll do while we're still on the topic of heralds as well, let's talk through these um, the angelic wraith and the celestial reprimands. We'll kick off with the angelic wraith there. Target attack with a card with herald in its name gets plus three. It's just like a cheeky. Um, Oh, it's like an attack reaction, isn't it? Unfortunately, it doesn't block those. So, but you put these in, and how come? So yeah, I think it's a really good pairing because Angelic Wrath and Celestial Reprimand both deal with polar opposite situations. Because Angelic Wrath is you haven't popped me, you've blocked out, you've blocked the number that it's going to hit for. Yeah. The Reprimand is you haven't covered it up, but you have popped me. So like they are the two different attack reactions for the well instance for the for the two different situations and in some matchups you do play both so it's good for them to play around both but they typically come in in different matchups for different scenarios so like angelic wrath is obviously going to be better in situations where your opponent's hoping to block your herald uh with two cards or maybe a piece of armor and you just go over the top go get your figment go get your angel and then it you know the on hit was what we're hoping for here yeah and happy to get cards out of you as well um so i thought and, and also I, angelic wrath is like perfectly on rate as well um like zero zero for three is like you know a card is generally worth three so that's that's fine it's one that i'm fine just throwing on there I've, i i presented lethal damage to kanos twice over the weekend by attacking with a herald they say no blocks i go plus three you've got to go off now like <laughs> having that a little bit of um reach is actually pretty cool um so yeah angelic wrath is i, I think i prefer that one because it's so much more arsenalable because it's just usable at, at quite a lot of different moments whereas reprimand i did find myself arsenaling it and wishing oh my god like against michael fenn arsenal the special reprimand i think it sat there for six turns because i kept sending herald of triumphs and he kept having six poppers in hand only and he was unhappy because he was like oh i don't have a Seven popper, yeah, I can't block it. Yeah. <laughs> He's blocking it with two cards, and I'm sat there unhappy going, Oh, I can't use my special reprimand. So, like, he's, yeah, it, it was an awkward moment. It sat in my arsenal for a long time. That's funny. He's, <laughs> that's funny. You're like, Please, please pop this. <laughs> please attempt to pop this so I can get you. He's like, No, I can't pop this. <laughs> you're both just yeah. going off, for God's sake. The, like, you're both not happy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, really, yeah. you should be both happy. Well, one of you should be happy. That's funny. But that's really good. It's, it's very, like, I would have looked at this as well and been like, made that simple mistake of, yeah, I'll put this down and I'll wait until I get you. And yeah, it, it's until you play it, you actually realize you need to get these sort of right stuff in the right time. Like, you know, I've, I've chucked some blues from other decks into the Arsenal thinking this will come around fine. And then actually, you're just like, no, no, no. Arsenal's a yeah. very key and it has an important slot. You had to get the right things into Arsenal. Um, and this is definitely not one of them. So that's really cool. Right. Well, there are your two, I call them gotcha cards. No, that yeah. space, it's 
fair to say. And uh, well, let's talk. Let's go through angels. Have you got them all? I don't believe you. Or is it all but one? No, I'm missing two. Oh, I'm missing um, two. Okay. Oh, well, there's pigment of tenacity, which I'm pretty sure no prism, no self-respecting prism player plays that one because it's just. It only it gives dominate and the angel gives dominate to your next attack and it's just you uh, yeah. could maybe see play because like I've mentioned dominate on the herald is sometimes useful but problem is it gives you dominate when the figment comes into play and that means you've just got a herald into yourself so like it's already, it's too late really like yeah. you've already done the thing um the other one that's missing is figment of war which is actually pretty good so it gives a, a courage token which is sort of like a might token that stays around until you actually do attack yeah um. And obviously giving plus one to like a Herald of Triumph or a Herald of Tenacity for like, you know, because forcing these on hits is really important. So I quite like that that angel. I think I'm going to put that one back in. Um, but yeah, these are the yeah. uh, must players. Yeah, okay, cool. So figure of erudition. These to me feel like the, the, the wonderful cast that Halo Elimination comes on. But actually before I kick into this, do you, do you, for, do you play like ever force play these ever? Like, just, I will cast these. I think the only time I did of the weekend was turn, my opponents turn zero, rather, and they attack me with their um, hammer. Yeah. So I blocked with one card and played a figment with my other three cards. It was a figment of protection, which is pretty whatever. Um, yeah. So basically, almost never. Right, okay. So these are, so you're never going to cast these. You need to basically just tease them out through the herald hitting and the halo elimination basically so these effects this is what you've got to find the right one for the right job at the right time especially the halo one so as we go through these um their on play ability is contextual to the matchup that you're going into and where are you health and everything so it's very complex but it seems a bit low-key but we'll go for it Figment of Erudition, when this enters the arena, create a Ponder token. Uh, Figment yeah. of Judgment, when this enters the arena, you may turn a card in a banished zone face down. I remember looking at this going, eh. But when you mentioned Kane, I was like, ooh. <laughs> also Katsu as well. So oh, Katsu yeah. go, I'll go get my bonds, and you go, I will pitch to Halo, and I'll turn that, whatever it is, face down. And they're like, oh, I was going to play that. <laughs> like if it's the, if it dishonored, it was going to hit you because obviously in this deck you really don't want to get dishonored. No, um, super crucial. Yeah, I uh, that that I love it. I love it. It's not just card draw plus one, whatever. It actually is just attacking a specific key thing in that time. Very strong protection when this enters. Make a spectral shield token. Uh, ravages that interaction that you said uh, mate, is just like I love it. Yeah, you going for the There's also angel. Nope. Yeah, and there's also the trick against Dramai, which Icelanders used to do. So if they've got 15 Ash Wings and they attack with one of them, you can go get the Ravages and shoot that Ash Wing to stop Gogan from working. So similar sort of idea there. Is that what that is? Is that the key thing for Figment and Ravages? Is it just that, again, kind of like the Figment of Judgment, the gotcha, like that key thing you want to do to, just to turn the tempo onto your side? This is the. Nope. No, you don't. Is that what their key thing is? So, I guess, well, Figment Ravages is actually probably the second best one after Erudition. Yeah. Um, because, yeah, so the, the, the main three are Erudition, Ravages, and Rebirth. Okay. And Ravages is so important for forcing damage later on in, like, the slower matchups. So when you're building up this soul... Um, through all of your cards like Genesis and Merciful Retribution and Heralds hitting and whatever into slower matchups where you're bringing in all, all these auras attacking with Fig the Angel of Ravages to banish and deal 2 arcane quite often this weekend I played against opponents with no arcane barrier like Bravo with no arcane barrier Right. so chipping them down with that is super important so this Ravages actually plays like many different roles oh okay yeah. cool and then Figment of Rebirth when this enters arena you may put a yellow action card from your graveyard on top of your deck okay cool it's like uh well it's not it's there's so many cards that just drag something out and put it on the top of your deck that's a really really strong ability when are you when is that moment coming into play that and what are you actually mostly putting on top of your deck so quite often you don't have a target for this because a lot of the time you 
so a lot of time when you hit him with a herald, instead of going to the graveyard, it's going to your soul. Yeah. Um, so a lot of time you don't have the targets that you would like. Uh, but sometimes you are blocking with the heralds and sometimes they get blocked out um, and not popped. Or even, even they get popped as well. Um, this one, we're mainly playing for the flip side. So we're mainly playing this for the angel ability on the other side. Yeah. Um, not as you put any yellow on top, and that's when things are getting a bit silly when you put in like Art Light Sentinel back on top and stuff. Oh no, not, not Art Light <laughs> Sentinel. Ugh. Okay, yeah, there we go. That's that. And then the Figment of Triumph, a card that I think actually has on face value quite a lot of so much use case in the moment when this falls onto the board because giving something a minus one, this turns very strong. Yeah, exactly. So, like. This one is somewhat multifaceted as well, so you can, like you mentioned, when I attack with a herald, if they pop it and they've just got the one attack that's making it a popper, you can go get this one with the figment or with the halo to make it not pop, which is pretty useful. You can also use this on their turn when they're like having a really wide turn. Um, so yeah. say like you're playing against a Katsu who's like having an enormous turn. This is like, sort of like an anti art of war because it'll give all their attack actions minus one this turn. It's like this round's on me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and when you play that on newer turn, you know, there's no card draw. <laughs> it's just, but the the horrible effect of minus one across the board, and it's like this could be a block, whatever card in that moment. That's, that's exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's really really strong. That's really cool. So, okay, and the figment of her edition. Let's flip over to these angels. Uh, once you attack with this, you banish a card. You draw two cards. Poof. I mean, just that's always the one that I just see any like prison player doing they get this they want this angel to go right it's I t this is again the real hard thing of just that angel balance and a question i wanted to ask you is is that are you are you very precious over your angels is this ward for a bit of a hindrance or is this is it very again contextual of the moment you're in you're happy to just throw an angel at something because like this seems like one you want to keep right yeah, so in, in my mind, I guess I have some angels in some matchups that are like what I think of as like throwaway angels. Yeah. Quite often it's judgment because judgment just turns banished cards face down. So like when I'm playing that into um some random aggro deck, like that's when I'll happily transform and I don't need a soul for it to work. Like I'm not particularly bothered about that dying or into like aggro matchups again, rebirth and triumph if they're out there. Like I'll just get them out. That's fine. Erudition, you never, ever, ever flip an attack with this one unless you've got the extra card in Soul to Banish to draw to. Yeah. Because that move is just, like, the best thing this deck does, really. Um, so I'll quite often get this one first for the Ponder Token. So, like, it's quite nice. You almost always want to get value out of the Ponder Token. So, like, if I've not got a card, if I'm out of cards this turn, I'll go get this one. Cards in Soul, got my Ponder Token, got my Arsenal. Now I'm building towards the second card in Soul, so that when I flip this angel, I can do its full effect. Um, so yeah, like <laughs> when it's about them, like protecting them, to like stop them from dying. Like how much am I precious about that? Again, it's sort of matchup dependent. Um, usually, if like my opponent's got enough cards, like if I'm playing against a Dash or a Katsu or a Fire that's got like a four or five card hand, and I've got an angel out, yeah, I'll. I probably just accept that it's going to die this turn, and I'm just looking to get at least three points of like protection out of it. Yeah, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Um, so we've gone through that. The angel of protection as well. When this, uh, when you ban it, when this attacks, you banish a card in here. So you get two spectral shield tokens. That's, that seems really good. Again, like you're saying, how spectral shields can just be Kadachi, you know, um, just stopping all these little turns. This seems really strong in that. Exactly. So this is another one where I wouldn't want to flip this one in particular until I've got the second uh, card in soul, so I can, yeah, get the get the extra defense out of that. Because games don't go long enough to like use all of your soul. So like you don't want to hoard it too much. You, don't, you never really want to end a game and lose a game with a card in soul, um, because presumably at some point you should you could you're attacking with an engine and you could have banished a card. Yeah. Um, no. Yeah. So no, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So there's. <clears throat> We'll go for it. We'll finish off these angels, and I'll ask this question later yeah. on uh, about about the soul. So yeah, the uh, second, <laughs> never even uh, archangel of ravages. Love that yeah. thing that you're saying. 
this is just amazing to help close games out because just dealing to arcane before even going, uh, it's just two for it's like a two for six would go again. It's really really strong. Yeah, again, you can shoot dragons with this as well because it's any target. So like you can attack one dragon, shoot another dragon, uh, do a bit of cleanup in that way also. Um, yeah. yeah, I also find, so moving on to a slight um, mention of the next angel, the the angel of rebirth, what's it called? Yeah, Avalon. Angel. Avalon, yeah. A lot of people talk about like, they're really obsessed with like doing the loop with like Artlight Sentinel, but... Honestly, like the thing, the card that I'm rebuying the most with Avalon is often the Figment of Ravages because I just want to go get that angel again and again, just to keep going with the Arcane. Um, like that's how good Archangel of Ravages is. That Archangel of Rebirth sort of, you know, digs him back up again, so we can do it again. Wow. Okay, that's really cool. I love that because you, we're, we're looking this again with how complex this deck can be, how many sort of openings and windows you can use. It, that is just the point of the deck, isn't it? Like, find the right tool to do the job at the right time, and it's down to you to find to be creative enough. And that's the thing, it's, as an illusionist, we're just being very creative with our heralds and our angels uh, to just get the job done. And I just love that that interaction. You're just going, no, I'm not doing this loop. I'm getting this angel. Let's keep going. <laughs> oh no, it's just, it just never ends. But the, I will bring the the soul question up at the end after I've talked about Victoria Archangel Triumph. Is this one of those? Is this one of those throwaway angels, or is this one actually quite strong? No, this one is mostly throwaway. Like if you, like it is a useful ability because um, it gives minus one this turn. So like any poppers are worse on this turn, but it also lasts through to their next turn. So if they're attacking you, their attacks. A minus one. That's really um, strong, actually. Which is a decent amount of value, but usually, I mean, in my experience with how this weekend's gone, opponents are usually not keeping very many cards on their turn because they're blocking and popping and trying to just defend themselves from dying, to be honest. Yeah. Um, so this one end up, ends up, yeah, being a bit of a throwaway angel that I usually don't use the soul fuck. I'm usually using that on like erudition or protection or ravages. Okay, so the question about the soul. Every one of these attacks are extremely strong and they've got a lot of potent ability to it, but they're all asking for a card in soul. And the only way you're going to get consistently getting cards in soul, um, obviously, is Genesis, but that's a. Seems we'll talk about these um, auras late, in a minute. How do you get these cards in soul so consistently? That seems to be the trick. The, like, that's the engine, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, Soul Shield is like the the lowest hanging fruit, really. Um, yeah. Like, I, I absolutely love it when I'm going second and my opponent on their first turn, they'll attack with like, I don't know, say you're playing against like a Levi who just wants to fill their graveyard and they just go eh, in with some random attack for six, like a blue Deadwood Rumbler or something like that. Yeah. And you just go Soul Shield. I'll start the game with a card in Soul, which now means I'm already halfway there towards my figure of erudition, drawing me cards and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so Soul, Soul, Shield is the, Soul Shield is the easiest one. Um, apart from that, it's it's really just forcing the heralds to hit, which is why the tricks are also so important. Like not only um, are the tricks, the celestial reprimands, and the angelic wraths really important for getting the hit to go get the figment, but also just like the soul is just so important. Um, there isn't much more to it than that, really. Like it's just about stretching your opponent's resources to like make it so that that last little blue warshoe and herald that's attacking them, yeah, they'll just let they'll just block three and let them take two. Like that doesn't that doesn't matter. But that card in soul is going to be two arcane damage later with a, with an end, archangel of ravages. So oh my days, it's just hearing about all this. It's just like it's you have to sort of concede to prisms like onslaught at some point, right? There's you've got all the means to stop it all, but you can't stop it all. There's a point of where you can't, and maybe there's certain heroes like you know guardians and brutes that are a lot more scary to deal with this. But that's why we're going to talk about the always now. Um, you're just going, cool, I'll just switch the deck up a little bit here. <laughs> I'm just going to create this horrible engine of souls and angels coming out in a different way, and we'll just kick this off with Genesis. Is this one of those cards that you're putting into those sorts of matchups? Yeah, so I guess I'll just mention, yeah, this has been a pretty... Last night, on looking at the Discord... The question I've seen the most is, how does this deck beat Guardian? So, like, yeah. people are looking at all the heralds and going, you know, 
classic illusionist pro problem, how do you deal with them just popping you all the time? Like, we don't have the old Luminaris and it was easy mode. So how do we do it? So we've got to make a pretty significant change to the deck uh, in the sideboard into, like, make use of cards like Genesis, like you say. And the the game plan sort of changes into when you play into these decks, like the Bravos and the Victors and stuff like that, where the first couple of turns, I'm just going to eat all the damage you throw at me. Like, I don't care if I'll take 20 damage in the first two or three turns, um, because I'm going to be playing cards out like Genesis and Merciful Retribution and Passing Mirage and stuff like this. Yeah. And... The idea behind this is that at some point it will get to a point where they cannot attack you anymore. So like Genesis, for example, the card we're talking about, yeah. this is a card that's just not ignorable. I don't feel too bad about putting this information out there because most players at the Pro Tour are going to know that you can't ignore Genesis, Like especially when there's a Vestige of Salsa over there. Yeah. Unless you're killing, actually killing your opponent, and I'm, I mean like putting him to zero, putting him to one and leaving a Genesis is a, is a tenuous proposition, really. Yeah. Um, because of my what what might happen on the next turn, um, like Genesis is an absolute kill on sight card, which almost makes it like a four cost arc like Sentinel in a way. Yeah. You can do like some go against shenanigans. You can go like each right go again into K Genesis, which is good. Quite often, I find my opponents don't have enough cards to be able to do that. Like if they want to block my Angel or block my Herald, which they pretty much have to. Mm -hmm. They're not going to have enough cards to be able to like go, go again into Kill Genesis. So that means their entire turn is Kill Genesis. So I've basically decided what they're doing on that on the next turn. <laughs> I know what they're yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and like with our, yeah, with the Auras as well, it's a similar sort of deal. So like Merciful Retribution is another example of, you know, you have to kill this. Yeah, you can because because if you leave this on, all this popping that you're doing. It's just fueling the engine. You've got to get rid of the. You got to get rid of these things that are just countering your counter, and then yeah, like you're saying, they're just. You've got to now deal with this. I have a full grip of cards in my hand. It, it is that, but is that little small balance of knowing that getting that tempo right? So, again, how are we dealing with guardians in this front? With oh, is this pass and mirage as well? So one of those cards that is helping to do that because it's stopping your first herald having phantasm so they're now going to throw a lot more cards at this and they now know that you've got to deal with this later on but what sort of big tricks are we doing to just get over the line yeah so it's all about there's no good like playing an ALS and saying go and they'll just pop it and you go okay I'll play Genesis your turn and then they'll pop it like yeah. you're not making any headway in there so it's a little bit hard to explain because you I, sort I of thought just... it would be. <laughs> <laughs> so I just have to cobble it together, and it doesn't come together in some sort of you do this and then you do this and then it, you're golden. Like it's not like you know clear thing. Like it's not like cats where you go, you play the outer war, then you play your attacks, and then you win sort of thing. Like it's yeah. some thing will come together where you can put together some sort of board with multiple things all at once, and then. Guardian's like, oh god, like which one do I even attack? And they're sat there holding the hammer, thinking, do I kill the Merciful, do I kill the Genesis, or do I kill the Archangel of Erudition? Like, and the way that manifests itself is, just imagine a scenario where like, you use the Halo to go get your second card to Soul. You block with a Soul Shield maybe earlier. Yeah. You go get your Arch your Figment of Erudition, and you transform it, and you attack, and you draw two cards, and so you've got a bunch of cards in hand now. Um. You got vestige turned on because the card's gone to your soul. Great. Yeah. And maybe you've drawn a Tome of Divinity, so you play that and draw three cards. <laughs> right. And then maybe you play like um ALS Passing Mirage or Genesis Merciful Retribution, which is pretty reasonable. I, like that sounds like it's a bit of a, a hard ask, but given Vestige is turned on and you've just drawn three cards, you've drawn two cards off of the Figment of Erudition, it's pretty reasonable that. And especially if you've got a card in Arsenal as well, just like, say you Arsenal the Genesis on turn one and you're waiting for this like big hand setup where you can do multiple things. Obviously, you can get unlucky if you say you Arsenal the Genesis and you play the Tome and you just draw a load of Heralds. Like, that's a pretty feel bad situation because it's like, Ugh, this was the window I needed to do something. Mm. So you end up with like, let's say you end up with. I like Sentinel. Let's say you end up with Merciful Attribution and Genesis and the Angel in play. Yeah. Well, what are they going to do? So, like, usually the right player there would be to kill the Genesis. So, they kill the Genesis, does the soul, deal them a damage. 
maybe you can do something on their turn with Kyle going to Soul, but whatever, you've got a full grip going into next turn with an Angel and a Merciful Retribution. You've just got Kyle into Soul, your Angel attacks and draws two cards, you're probably going to do the same again next turn, you're probably going to have an insane <laughs> turn next turn. Especially because the Merciful Retribution lets you attack with Herald, and when they get popped, you get to go get a Figment and turn on your Vestige. So, like, these are the sort of play patterns that end up having these massive boards of, like, lots of things in play, and Guardian are just, like, thinking, right, they just can't attack you anymore. Like, that's, that's the reality <laughs> of it. Like, if they attack you, I mean, you've got an Angel in play that's warding four anyway, so, like, how much damage could they really do? Um, a lot of the on-hits you don't even care about. Like, I got hit by a Starstruck for 10 Dominate against Guardian, and I was like, okay, I won't attack next turn. I'll just play an Arc Light Sentinel and uh, Genesis. Yeah. Like, just back on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that just sounds horrific. Just hearing about this. Just but again, it's contextual. You gotta see what you you gotta craft these sort of difficult turns and in like it's it's utilizing all the um stuff that the this hero can offer with like you're saying Time of Divinity with um the vestige of soul. That just seems like that those combinations are just like boom. You, they're just there's just explosive pop-off turns, and we're used to seeing them with heroes in the form of damage, right? When you're seeing Chain, you're combining and weaving these turns to generate a stupid number of of attacks or damage that's just like, whoa, okay, that just seems crazy. And even if, you know, that's I'm just utilising that Runeblade sort of feel to it, and even Wizards can sort of do this as well, where you just got to, you got to go, get, get it, go, make your cards sing to each other really well. And when that happens, then you just create this board state and this this ability of going, dude, now what? Now what? And that's that moment. That's how you beat the Guardians. With just like that. Is and I will just mention, and this card is sideways, apologies everyone, there's nothing I can do about that. The 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 library, <laughs> right? Is this a card that's also extremely super important? You must have this fabled, right? And there is another fabled, but this one. No, I'm sick of this card. Honestly, like, so I played it. It, it was responsible for my almost responsible. I mean, half, I'm half to blame because I did play poorly in the game. But basically, I was playing against Michael Feng, who was playing Bravo. It was my one loss uh, in the tournament, and I made a pretty severe mistake. Um, Basically, I had three cards in soul and a Celestial Cataclysm in my arsenal, which obviously requires three cards in soul to be used. And I used one of them to shoot for two arcane with the um, Angel of Ravages. Yeah. And that ended up locking up my arsenal. Then I drew a great library. On a, I'm on like 10 life, like, and he's we're at a point where we're sort of racing a little bit and because he cleared out my auras. And... You know, when you draw a great library, you've got two options. You're either playing it or you're arseling it. And if you're not, you're just IPing yourself, which is obviously awful. So I just want it out of the deck now, to be honest. Like, wow. I think it's just a reliability because I think the Guardian matchup is good enough that you don't actually need it. I could see it into Victor because they are so much slower than Bravo that you could probably get away with playing it, but I don't think it's necessary. Um, okay. Okay, so so which I'm sure a lot of people are happy with because it's they don't want to sink two hundred euros or whatever on it. Yeah. No, that's really. I was actually just really relieved for you to hear that. Of course, it's a powerful card, but don't fret. There's the, after hearing so many other things that are going on, like the deck has so many cool ways to just activate this engine of inevitability. And this card is is it is it a bit of a win more? Is that it can be. A lot of the time when you have the time to play it. It's because you're winning so hard. So, like, <laughs> yeah, it, doesn't actually, yeah. it doesn't actually matter that much. Like, you are winning. And, like, if you would have used that card and action point to just throw a herald at them, it probably would have, you know, done the job just as fine. Yeah. All right. Awesome. And let's talk about the other fable. The Light of Soul. Is that a different sort of beast? Is that one that you feel like you should get this in your deck? 100%. So this one is, like, I was a bit of a outer at first but um yeah this card is actually just amazing like if all the soul filling that we we're talking about earlier about like how valuable and how hard it is sometimes to get cards into your soul like this one just goes 
if you've got a yellow on top, just throw it straight in there. And if, <laughs> if it's a herald, go get a figment. Like, do everything. Everything's just turned on. And your opponent had absolutely no say in any of this. Um, it's super important into matchups where you're, like, struggling to hit them, maybe. So, like, maybe into Bravo, where you maybe just draw some figments. But if you just draw this... Sorry, you draw some heralds, and you draw this, and you're like, oh, now I can just get an angel into play and, like, start doing that. And maybe they can put their attention onto that. Into Kasai, sometimes it's hard to break through, but Light of Soul just busts that wide open. Um, I bought a cold foil at the start of this weekend because I like like how flat they are in my deck rather than rainbow foil. Yeah. Um, I wonder if the price of this card will go up. I know that. Thank you. Uh, thank, you thank you. By the way. <laughs> yeah, you got. Uh, I in one box. I in, in in two boxes. I open the rainbow foil one. Next box, cold foil one. And then I sat there going, "Oh wait." So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I heard some live from the traders um, whilst I was playing in the top eight. So might see a spike on that one. But yeah, I I think that card is amazing and wouldn't wouldn't cut it. Oh, that's 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 so awesome to hear. That's so awesome to hear. And then yeah, I like Sentinel. If you attack that, we'll, since we're just rounding everything off a little bit, and I'm bringing this up, um, it just basically forces them to attack this. This is just uh, um, you know, uh, t I don't know what the magic term is. I never played a lot of magic. So is it just like just time walk? Time walk is what we're calling. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, uh, card is just really good. It's not as. Hmm. It's not super important in a lot of matchups, like into some matchups like Katsu and Fi and like aggro decks, like groups. Like you don't always have time to play it. It's a it's really nice way to convert all these extra cards that you're drawing. So like if you're going to do like the Pigment of Erudition draw two or Herald of Erudition draw two, like, like I was saying about running out of action points, it's just a really nice way to convert them. Whilst also being obviously super, super important in the Guardian matchup to protect your actual crucial ones like Genesis and Merciful Retribution. Mm, yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair. Um, okay, so we've talked about um, a lot of this stuff. We talked about the import the Tone of Divinity, we just touched on that as well. Pierce Reality, just one of those one off auras that gives you an X1 plus two, just a one copy of, uh, just a bit nice. Yeah, you never want to play a second one um, because. It's just you sort of get diminishing returns really from that. Um, it's just another good, nice turn zero card to have. Um, quite often you'll make players like throw a. So you've got a three card hand of like a. Um, basically, I've had four card hands where like the way my resources play out, attacking with heralds, if they pop. A herald, I can like use my one floating resource to get the action point back from footsteps. I've got no, no resources left to play a pierce reality in past turn, like yeah. nice little flows like that. Yeah, lovely, um, lovely. And then you put in two copies of that's all you got. Okay, is it just a yellow, which is important and pretty good against you know those uh, pesky people that show up with low cost weapons? Yeah, exactly. So, um, like. Pistol is a really good one from Dash, and uh, that's a matchup that needs needs the help really. So like having access to that is quite useful. And again, like Kadaches and stuff like that, or even Dramai as well, because all these little attacks that are attacking you and threatening your ward for Angel, you often want to hold a hand with this deck. It's that deck is actually when it's not playing all the messing around with all the aura nonsense. This deck is like one of the most ag aggressive decks in the format, if not the most aggressive deck. Yeah. So you don't really want to. You often want to keep four cards, and this one lets you block and block protect your angel for a little bit before it can eat a proper hit. This will get your four cards back. So, yeah, yeah, awesome. And then we'll end off. The, you were saying about the celestial cataclysm. Cool to see that you got three copies of these. Um, and it's a. This tells me that um, if you're going to play it, you've got a, a nice big healthy amount of um, soul, but it's also asking for the same things. You kind of want all your other stuff doing. So why did you put three copies of these in? Yes, these have three roles really. The main one is yellow block three. So like you need you need these in your deck just for in the same way that like Katsu wants his zero cost blues that block three, like his pitch into Kadachis. This is just a solid like um pitch and block role role player in that sense. It's a popper mm -hmm. and it's a seven power popper, which is huge, especially now as the mirror's gonna get more important. Uh and like Dramai is an a matchup that you want you need some help into really. And then it also has this other side of the the 
uh, usage of it where against Guardians, you try and pitch the scale as much as you can. When I'm pitching these, I'm like, yep, you're going to be seven go again when I see you again because I quite often have quite a big sell against Guardian and this is a really, really good way to convert that. Yeah, no, that's 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 really, really cool. That is really cool. So we've touched on all the cards here. Um, yeah, it, there's a lot there. And I know that one of the biggest questions that is going to be asked for me is, I well, you talked about the Great Law at the Library of Soul. Um, I don't have a copy of that. What do I need to put in instead? And I imagine... So what would you swap that card out with? What's your first thoughts? First thought, I haven't tried it, but um, well, I've tried the card. Figment of War um, is my first thought. Um, like I've I've been playing this list with Jake for a while now, and we've been playing Seven Figments for a while. Um, and it's quite nice to be able to sideboard out Figment of Judgment into some matchups, yeah. like where it's like actually blank or Figment of um, Triumph is sometimes blank. Um, yeah, like at making use of that is pretty pretty nice. So I. I'd, I think that's where I'd start. Um, yeah, I haven't put too much thought into no, it. I just fine. know that. I don't, I don't like library. I know that. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> cool. So that's that. And do I need to buy the Light of Soul? If I can't buy the Light of Soul, and I know we've just talked, and I would say you should try and get it because it's very, very strong. But if you can't, what would you probably tease in? Is it another Herald or? Can I say Heart Fiendle or is that. <laughs> 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 it just gets worse. No. no, so Heart was a card that we tried in this because obviously you do start on thirty two. But um, yeah, if you're looking for, I guess, a bit more, bit of a cheaper option, um, maybe like the third that all you got would be pretty pretty solid. Yeah. Um, it helps in some of like your hardest matchup is Agro Dash, and it would help there. So I'd probably go with that. Yeah, cool. But um, do endeavour to try and pick this one up if you can because um, it's very good. And from hearing all this. It's doing a lot of work. So, yeah, that's it. And the sideboard matches are all up on here as well. Thank you so much for doing that. I know that you've posted this out on Discord, so I'm sure a lot of people are eating this up and really trying this out. Um, I There's so much to say, which we won't go into, because, again, it's one of those games uh, decks that you need to pick up and get loads of games down and just enjoy playing it and seeing sort of the amazing interactions that can come from it. I'm sure that's actually quite a lot of the joy of this deck is, wow, I can't believe I've just done this. And I'm sure someone's going to tell you they've just done this thing in this moment. That's like, cool. Didn't think, <laughs> didn't know that could even be a, th a thing in that moment. But yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and I'm still figuring it out as well. Like, I'm still trying to figure out like the proper plans into like the harder matchups, stuff like Brute and stuff like that. Like, I'm, I'm trying out playing Auras into Brute, which sounds really scary because it's like, yeah, I'm saying I'm going to take, take their first few turns of damage. Like, yeah, that could be really scary. So I'm still figuring things out myself as well. I'm tentatively set thinking I might play this in LA. Um, obviously, we'll see. it's going to be pretty well known now and um yeah people are gonna be trying things out so we'll have to see yeah no th thank you so much rob for taking the time to do this so is it we'll end this off any shout outs you want to give before we close uh, so first and foremost uh jake wob and who have uh, asked to take you know a decent solid amount of credit for, for working with me on this deck um other parts of my testing team uh matt duggan james thorgood and uh, my partner Lila Green, um, she absolutely smashed this weekend making day two of the calling, and then uh, I think she went seven and one in like CC side events all weekend. So like she had a really good weekend, made a bunch of money. Um, yeah, that's that's everyone I think, and like congrats to Francesco as well for winning the calling. It was really nice to see two British players in there. I think of Francesco, even though he's Italian, I think of him as a British Italian. We're claiming him. Um, <laughs> we're claiming him. He's, he's one of the good guys. So, yeah. um, awesome to see, yeah, two English players in the in the top eight That's... in the finals. I guess. Yeah. yeah, no, absolutely. It was an all it was an all English um, stampede. So it was awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Rob. Check out the deck link and uh, see you later. Thanks. Bye.